Okay, good afternoon. Let's uh, have a look at the solutions of our previous assignment. Okay, question one. Okay, so <clears throat> we can just put to negative three to the left hand side of the inequalities. And rewrite the expression using the common denominator. Okay, so the original inequality is equivalent to this one. Right? Okay, so next we need to rewrite the whole expression and let's combine all the terms of the numerator. And this is equivalent to 9x, negative 7, divided by 2x, minus 1, greater than 0, right? So now we have a ratio that is positive. That means we can either have both the numerator and denominator positive or both of the numerator and uh, denominator uh, negative, right? So the uh, original inequality is equivalent to first case, positive numerator and positive denominator, right? Or can have negative the negative numerator and at the same time negative denominator right okay so now we only need to solve these two cases separately okay first case x is more than seven over nine and x should be more than one over two right Second case, first x need to be less than seven over nine, and x should be less than one over two, right? Okay, to decide the final solution, we need to compare the two numbers here. Which one is larger? So seven over nine is about 0 0.7 something, right? And one over two is, is exactly 0 0.5. So seven over nine is a little larger than one over two, right? And this is equivalent to first case, if X should be greater than both of the two numbers, this can be combined to X should be larger than the larger number, which is seven over nine, right? Second case, if x need to be less than both of the two numbers, this can be combined to x should be less than the smaller number, which is one over two, right? Okay, so considering both of cases, final result is x is seven over nine, or x can also be less than one over two. Right? Okay, this is the whole process of solving these questions. Do you have any questions? No? Okay, if you don't have any questions, let's move on to the next one. Okay, question two. Okay, again, we can't just multiply both sides using 2x minus, set minus 1, right? Because we don't know the sign in front of this term. That means we need to put everything on the left-hand side and rewrite the whole expression using the common denominator. Okay, if you put minus 2x, plus one to the left hand side, it becomes positive two X minus one, right? 
and this should be less than zero, okay? And if you rewrite this using the common denominator, it becomes 8x over 2x minus one plus 2x minus one times 2x minus one over 2x minus one. And this should be less than zero. And this is equivalent to 8x plus 2x minus one to the second over 2x minus one, less than zero. And this is equivalent to 8x plus 4x squared minus 4x plus one. divided by 2x minus one, and this should be less than zero, right? Okay, next step. 4x square plus 4x plus one over 2x minus one. Okay, if you're familiar with the formula, this is actually a perfect square, right? This is perfect square of 2x. Uh, sorry, this is a, this can be rewrite to 2x plus one square, right? Over 2x minus one. Uh, sorry, this should be less than zero, less than zero. Okay, so now we have a ratio that is less than zero. So this means it is equivalent to the signs in front of the numerator and denominator should be different, right? So first case, the numerator is less than zero. And at the same time, denominator should be a positive, right? Or second case, the numerator is positive. And at the same time, the denominator is negative, right? Remember that the signs in front of the denominator and denominator should be different. Okay, so now we need to solve these two cases separately. For the first case, note that for any number that any real number squared, it is always non-negative, <coughs> non right? So no matter x, it, no matter what x is. There is no number that it's squared can be less than zero. So the solution for the first case must be X belongs to an empty set. There is no solution for the first case, right? For the second case, first of all, we need to ensure that something squared is greater than zero. So remember that something squared is always greater than zero or equal to zero, right? As long as it is not equal to zero, it is always above zero. So as long as we ensure that X is not minus one over two, this expression is always greater than zero. Why? Because when X is minus one over two, this expression is zero, right? So as long as X is not minus one over two, this is always greater than zero, okay. And, and at the same time, two X minus one less than zero, this is equivalent to X smaller than one over two, right? Okay, so now let's consider these two solutions. Final result must be X less than one over two. And at the same time, X cannot be minus one over two. Understand? Do you have any questions? Okay, any questions?
Okay. Let's see the next one then. Okay, question three. All right, again, we can't just multiply minus x plus six to both sides, right? Because we don't know the sign in front of this expression to decide whether we need to change the direction of the inequality symbol. So again, let's move everything to the left hand side and rewrite the whole expression using the common denominator. So the original inequality is equivalent to 5x plus 2 over minus x plus 6 plus 9, less than or equal to 0, right? And further equivalent to 5x plus 2 over minus x plus 6 plus 9 over uh, times 5x plus 2 5x plus 2 less than or equal to 0. And this is equivalent to 5x plus 2 plus 45x plus, oh, sorry, I uh, made a mistake here. Mm. This is not 5x plus 2. Should be the common denominator is minus x plus 6, right? Okay, so the numerator is 5x plus 2 minus 9x plus 40, uh, 54 over common denominator is minus x plus 6, less than or equal to 0, right? And this is equivalent to 5x minus 9x is... 4 minus 4x plus 54 plus 2 is 56 over minus x plus 6 less than or equal to 0, right? Okay, so now we have a ratio that is equal to or less than 0. So this is equivalent to, first of all, this ratio here can be 0. Okay, it can be zero or it can also be less than zero. Okay, so the original question is equivalent to an equation for an inequality. Okay, for the equation, in order to ensure the ratio is zero, we need to ensure that the numerator is zero. And at the same time, remember that the denominator cannot be zero. This is a solution for the equation, right? Or for the inequality, if we have a ratio that is less than zero, this means signs in front of the numerator and denominator should be different, right? So we can either have a negative numerator and at the same time, a positive denominator, or we can also have a positive numerator and at the same time, negative denominator, right? Okay, so the original question is now equivalent to the three cases here. The first case, minus 4x equals 56. This means x is 14, right? Because 56 over 4 is 14. And at the same time, x cannot be positive 6, right? OK, second case, x should be greater than 14. And at the same time, x should be less than 6. Okay, third case, x should be less than 56. And at the same time, x should be larger than 6, right? Okay, further simplified to first case, x should be 14. 
Second case, x is larger than 14 uh, and less than six. Of course, there is no such x. So x belongs to an empty set. Third case, x should be less than 56 and at the same time, greater than six, right? So we can combine this. Okay, all right, let's consider these three cases. The final result is, uh, sorry, made a mistake here. Uh, this should be 14. Third case should be x less than 14 and greater than six, right? So if we consider these three cases, the final result is x should be larger than six and at the same time, less than or equal to 14, right? This is our final result. Okay, please have a look at this. Do you have any questions? No? All right, let's proceed to the next one. Okay, question four. All right, again, the method is to put everything to the left hand side and rewrite the whole expression using a common denominator. A common denominator is x plus two greater than or equal to zero, right? Okay, so this is further equivalent to minus eight x times, uh, sorry, plus x plus two to the second over x plus two, right? Greater than or equal to zero. And this is equivalent to minus 8x plus, remember, remember that you can expand this using a formula. This is x squared plus 4x plus 4 over x plus 2, greater than or equal to 0, right? And this is equivalent to x squared minus 4x plus 4 over x, x plus 2, greater than or equal to 0, right? And remember that x, x squared minus 4x plus 4 is can be factored to x minus 2 squared using a formula, right? Over x plus 2, this should be greater than or equal to 0. And again, now we have come to an end that is a ratio that is greater than or equal to zero. This is equivalent to, first of all, this ratio can be zero, right? And second case, this ratio can also be above zero. And this is further equivalent to, if you have a ratio that is zero, you need to ensure that the numerator is zero and at the same time, the denominator is not zero, right? Or second case, if you have a ratio that is greater than zero, that means the signs in front of the numerator and denominator should be the same. So we can either have a positive numerator and at the same time, a positive denominator, or we can have a, a negative numerator and a negative denominator, right? Okay, let's solve them one by one. First case, x minus two squared is zero. That means x is zero. And at the same time, x cannot be minus two. 
uh, sorry, x must be two and x cannot be minus two. Second case, x minus two squared is greater than zero. As long as it is not zero, it is always greater than zero, right? So as long as we ensure that x is not two, because when x is two, x minus two squared is zero. So as long as x is not two, x minus two squared is always greater than zero. And at the same time, x should be larger than minus two. Okay, third case x minus two squared, no matter what x is, this something squared cannot be negative, right? So there is no solution for x in this system of inequalities. So x belongs to an empty set for the third case. And this is equivalent to first, x can be two. Second, x, cannot be two. And at the same time, X is larger than minus two. Or third case, X belongs to an empty set. If you consider both, uh, if you consider all of the cases, the final solution is X should be larger than minus two, right? Okay, this is our final solution. Please have a look at this. Any questions? No questions? All right, let's see the next one. Question five. What is a possible range of M such that the system of inequalities here has no solutions for X? Okay, so how do we approach this question? First of all, it's better for us to solve this system first, right? So let's call the a regional system star. System star is equivalent to, first of all, X should be greater than or equal to minus six M minus eight over three. Remember that if we divide both sides using a positive number three, we don't change the direction of the inequality symbol here, right? Second X should be less than 2m plus seven over minus nine. Okay, also remember that if we divide both sides using a, a negative number here, minus nine is a negative number, right? You need to remember to change the direction of the inequality symbol. All right, so we denote the first number here is k1 and second number here is k2. Now we need to decide the relative positions of K1 and K2. So if, if K1 is here, which side of K2 should be relative to K1 in order that there is no solution for X? Okay, can you tell me? K2 should be to the left or to the right of K1? in order that there is no solution for X. Okay, the system says X should be larger than or equal to K1, right? So where should be K2? To the left of K1 or to the right of K1 to ensure there is no solution for X. Okay, Emily just gave me an answer. How about Dora? 
left. Okay, so both of you think K2 should be here, right? Okay, if, it, if K2 should be here, according to the system, X should be less than K2. So X should be to the left of K2, right? So in this case, there is no overlapped area. So that means there is no solution for our X here, right? Okay, the question is, can K1 be exactly the same with K2? So if K1 is here, and K2 is also here. Can K1 and K2 be the same number? Okay, according to the system, X should be larger than or equal to K1, or uh, sorry, and X should be less than K2. So can you tell me, can the two numbers here be the same? Okay, Dora, I have a question for you. If the two numbers are same, the solution for X is actually X greater than or equal to K1, right? And X should also be less than K2. Can you tell me, is there any solution for X? Okay, I'll set you another example. If X is greater than or equal to four, let's say four, and X at the same time should be less than four. Any solution for the system? There is no solution, right? So that means if K1 equals K2, is there any solution for X? According to the system. No solution, right? So that means if K1 equals K2, there is also no solution for X. Okay, so the reasoning is if K2 less than K1, According to the analysis, K2 can also be equal to K1, right? If K2 is less than or equal to K1, there is no solution. For X, right? And we only need to solve this to find the value of M here. So K2 less than or equal to K1, is actually equivalent to this 2m plus 7 over minus 9 less than or equal to k1 k1 is minus 6m minus 8 over 3 right and this is equivalent to let's multiply both sides using positive 9 positive 9 is a positive number, so we don't change the direction of the inequality symbol. Okay, left hand side is minus 2m plus 7. Right hand side, 3 times minus 6m minus 8. This is equivalent to minus 2m minus 7, less than or equal to minus 18m minus 24, right? Okay, so now let's separate the M and constants. If we put minus 18 M to the left hand side, it becomes 16 M less than or equal to minus 24 plus seven is minus 17, right? And at last we can divide both sides using a uh, 16. 16 is positive, so we don't change the equality symbol here. So M is less than or equal to minus 17 over 16. This is our M. M should be 
satisfy this inequality in order that there's no solution for X. Okay, so the final conclusion is if M is less than or equal to minus 16 over, uh, sorry, sorry, minus 17 over 16, there is no solution for X. Okay, so this is a complete process to solve this question. Okay, please have a look at this. Any questions, let me know. Okay, any questions? No? All right, let's see the next one. Question six, in the 2D Cartesian plane, see the region which is the solution to the inequality, 9x minus 3y greater than or equal to minus 15. So we have already know that the area corresponding to uh, inequality is a region that is below or above a line, right? So first of all, we need to find that boundary line. That means we need to separate y and x. Okay, so 9x minus 3y greater than or equal to minus 15. First of all, this is equivalent to 3y less than or equal to 9x plus 15, right? And we can further divide both sides using us three. Three is positive, so we don't change the direction symbol here. The di direction of the inequality symbol here. So y is less than or equal to 3x plus five, right? And the corresponding line, Remember that line is an equation, not an inequality. So you need to specifically state the equation of this line, right? So the line is y equals 3x plus 5. Pay attention to the symbol here. This is equal, equality symbol, not an inequality symbol, right? This is our line. So in order to find this line, It's better to find is X and Y intercept first, okay? So that means we need to check when X is zero, Y is what? When X is zero, Y is five, right? So that means it passes the point zero, five. And we also know that when Y is zero, X is minus, five over three, right? So let's say minus five over three here. Here's here. You need to specifically list the point, the two points here. Otherwise, nobody will know what the coordinates of the points, right? Okay, so what I mean is when you draw the line here like this, remember to specifically write the coordinates of the two points, right? This point is zero, five. This point is minus five, three, zero, right? In this way, it is clear that this, this line passes through these two points, right? Okay, but it's not over yet. Remember the question asks you to shade the region corresponds to the inequality, right? The inequality is y is less than 3x plus 5. That means y should, uh, the, the shaded region should be the region below this line, right? So we can put two errors here. The region is 
below this line. Okay. Of course, you can also shade the area like this, right? All right, any questions? More questions? All right, let's see the next one. Question seven, write the expression inequality of the area below the given line as shown in the following graph. Okay, so first of all, we need to find the equation of this line, right? And the shaded area is apparently below this line. So if the line is, for example, if the equation of the line is y equals kx plus b, the shaded area must be y less than kx plus b, right? Y less than, uh, strictly less than, because this is a dotted line. For a dot line, the region is strictly, a uh, y strictly less than kx plus b, right? Okay, so first of all, we need to find the equation of this boundary line. Okay, note that we know the y-intercept is 0, 2. x-intercept is 4, 0, right? So let's say note that, let's call this line 1, uh, x intercept of line one is the four zero and the y intercept of line one is zero two. So according to the two intercept form. Of a line, the equation of line one. Okay, remember what is a two intercept form? Two, inter two intercept form is x over a plus y over b is zero. This is a two intercept form of an equation of a line. A is the x coordinate of x intercept. B is the y coordinate of the y intercept, right? So according to the two intercept form, the equation of line one is x over four plus y over two is one, right? This is equivalent to, remember we need to separate x and y. So we can multiply both sides using a four, right? This is equivalent to x plus two y equals four, which is also equivalent to two y equals minus x plus four which is 
y equals minus one over two x plus two, right? Okay, so this means the equation of line one is y equals minus one over x, one over two x plus two. And of course, the, because the shaded region is enter this line, that means the shaded area is y less than this line, right? So y less than minus one over two x plus two. Okay, please have a look at this. Do you have any questions? No questions? Okay, let's see question eight. Graph the region of points that satisfy both inequalities. All right, if you want to graph the region, you need to find region one and region two. And the overlapped area is the region we want to find because there is an end, right? X should satisfy both of the regions. Okay, so let's call this inequality number one, and this is inequality number two. So in order to find the shaded area of inequality number one, first of all, we need to find the bounded line, right? So inequality number one is equivalent to Y is larger than minus 4x plus 2, right? And corresponding line 1. Remember that line is always an equation. So the corresponding line 1 is you can simply change the inequality symbol to equality symbol. Y is minus 4x plus 2, right? This is a boundary line. And in order to draw it, it's better to find its x and y intercept. So one x is zero, y is two. One y is zero, x is one over two, right? Okay, now we can find, can draw the line on the coordinates here. On the Cartesian plane here. So let's say this is our 2D Cartesian plane. This is Y axis and X axis. First line passes through two points, which is zero, two. So let's say this is two and one over two, zero. So let's say this is one, over two. Okay. This is not necessary to the scale. So that's why it is important you label the coordinates here. Okay. No matter what the size here is, as long as you clearly label the coordinates, you're, you'll be fine, right? So this line passes through these two points. And note that this is a strictly greater than, so we need to use dot line. Okay. All right, so the inequality says y is greater than minus four x plus two, this means the region is actually the region which is above this line, right? This is our region one. So next, region two. 
inequality number two is equivalent to 2y less than minus 9x plus 6, right? And this is equivalent to y less than minus 9 over 2x plus 3. Okay, so our line 2 is, remember, you need to change the inequality symbol to a equality symbol, which is y equals minus 9 over 2x plus 3, right? This is our line 2, which is a boundary line of region 2. And when x is 0, y is, of course, 3. And when y is 0, x equals 2 over 3. So it also passes through two points. First point is 0, 3. So let's call this, this is 3, right? Again, it's not necessarily to scale. You must, <clears throat> but you must label the coordinates clearly, okay? And the second point is 2 over 3, 0. 2 over 3 is apparently larger than 1 over 2, right? So let's say this is 2 over 3. Okay, so the second line is passing through three and two over uh, two over three. Now you also need to check is this line intersect with the first line like this or like this. So that means which has a relatively larger slope, right? So the slope of the first line Let's say slope of the first line is minus four. And slope of the second line is minus nine over two, which is minus, uh, minus nine over two, which is my, minus 4.5. So the second line has a slightly larger slope. Uh, a slight, slightly absolute value of the slope, right? So this means the second line, the blue line should be steeper than the blue line, right? So this line should cross like this. The crossing, the intersect point, the intersecting point is somewhere here, right? Okay, so if we know this, we can just connect these two lines. Okay, this is our second line. Okay, somewhere the intersect point, intersecting point is somewhere here. So let's say this is intersecting intersecting point. All right, so the shaded area of the second region is Let's check the inequality. The inequality says y should be smaller than minus 9 over 2x plus 3. So that means the area should be below this blue line, right? So below this line. OK, so this is our region 2. And now, we can see that the overlapped area must be here, right? Remember, this is a boundary line here, and boundary line here. The required region should be within these two lines, right? This is a required region, which is under this blue line, but sorry, under this green line and above that blue line, right? All the way till the intersection point, okay? 
please have a look at this. Do you have any questions? No? All right, let's see question nine. Question nine, graph the region of points that satisfy all of the following inequalities, okay? So now we have four inequality. That means four regions, right? And also we have a brackets here. That means X should satisfy all of the inequalities, which means X is overlapped area of the four regions, okay? So let's call them one, two, three, and four. So first of all, we need to find those boundary lines, right? Okay, first inequality is equivalent to y is less than x plus eight, right? And corresponding line one is of course y equals x plus eight. So when x is zero, y is eight, and one, y is zero. X is of course minus eight, right? So now we can draw the first line on the 2D Cartesian plane. Y axis and X axis. First line passes through point zero eight. So suppose this is eight and minus eight zero. And suppose this is minus eight. Our first line passes through these two points. Okay. And let's label it L1. And corresponding region is because it says Y is less than, right? Less than means the region is below this line, right? Okay, this is the first region. Okay, second region, let's change another color, which is how about green. Let's use green one. Second region is Okay, second inequality is equivalent to y smaller than or equal to minus x plus two. And corresponding line two is y equals minus x plus two, right? And it is apparently, you can see that x, when x is zero, y is two. And when y is zero, x, is of course also two, right? Okay, so the second line passes through these two points, zero, two. Okay, suppose this is two, zero, two, and two, zero. All right, this is our second line. And this time, it's not strictly less than. It is that it says less than or equal to, right? So we can use lines like this, not dot line, right? Okay, so this is our line two. And because it says y is less than minus x plus two, that is a region below this line, right? Okay, so now we have two regions. Third region. We use another color, how about red? Okay, uh, inequality three is equivalent to, 
Uh, actually, it's very simple. It just x less than or equal to minus one, right? So the line three, we can directly says we can directly write line three. Is you can just change the equal symbol to equal to symbol, which is x minus one, right? So where is x minus one? X minus one is actually a, a vertical line, which is parallel to y axis. So suppose this is minus one, and this must be the vertical line, X equals minus one, right? Okay, so this is our third line. Let's call it L3. And inequality says X is less than or equal to less than minus one, of course, is the region to the left hand side, right? To the left hand side of L3. Okay, so fourth region. Let's use uh, purple. Fourth region, the so corresponding boundary line is line four. The equality of the equation of <clears throat> line four is y equals one, right? Y equals one is a horizontal line that is parallel to x axis. So suppose this is or this is one. And the horizontal line should look like this. Right, and uh, this is our line four. And how about the region? It says y should be greater than one. Greater than one is, of course, above this line, right? Okay, so now can you tell which is overlapped area? The overlapped area should satisfy all of the regions, right? So first of all, line one, it should be below line one, look like this here, right? And line two, uh, it should also be below line two. And should be to the left of line three and should be above line four, right? So this is our shaded area. Okay. And note that it is recommended that you also label this point here, because if you don't label it, it's a little confusing that you don't know whether this intersection point is to the left of the red line or to the right. So what is the coordinate of the intersection point here? Intersection point, let's call it P. P is, P should satisfy both L2 and L1, right? Which is equivalent to L2 is Y equals minus x plus two. L1 is y equals x plus eight, right? 
And from this system, we can solve that minus x plus two equals x plus eight, which is two x equals minus six. So x equals minus three and y equals five. Okay, so the coordinates of P is minus five, a uh, minus three and five. And of course, minus three is less than minus one. So P should be to the left of the red line, right? And the shaded area is actually here. Okay, you have any questions? No? Okay, last question. Question 10 which is a, a linear optimization question. Find the maximum value of 2x minus 3y such that the following three inequalities are satisfied. Okay, so we have already know that this is actually a bounded region, right? So the question is, we need to check different values of this expression at the different vertexes of this boundary region and decide which vertex can have a maximum value of 2x minus 3y, right? Because according to the hint here, the maximum value or the minimum value can only be achieved at vertexes of the boundary region, of the bounded region, right? Okay, so let's say this is one, n equal to one. And this is number two, and this is number three. We need to find these <coughs> bounded region first. Okay, so inequality number one is equivalent to three y less than or equal to 2x plus 6, which is equivalent to y equals y <coughs> equals or less than 2 over 3x plus 2, right? And corresponding line 1, which is a boundary line, is y equals 2 over 3x plus 2, right? And in order to conveniently find this line in our 2D Cartesian plane, it's better to find its x and y intercept. So one x is zero, y is two. And when y is zero, x is minus three, right? Okay, now we can find this line in our 2D Cartesian plane. Okay, suppose the 2D Cartesian plane is here. So, okay. Y axis and X axis. This line passes through two points, zero, two. Zero, two, let's say two is here. And next point is minus three, zero. So mi minus three, suppose minus three is here. Okay, this is our line one, right? Let's label it here, line one. And how about the region? Region says y is less than or equal to. This means the region is below the line one, right? This is our bounded region one. Uh, sorry, this is our region one. Uh, how about region two? Region two. 
the inequality number two is equivalent to y is larger than or equal to minus 2x plus 4, right? And corresponding line 2, line L2 is y equals minus 2x plus 4. So we know that when x is 0, y is 4. And when y is 0, x is 2, right? So line 2 passes through two points. 0, 4, and 2, 0. Let's say 2 is here. And it passes through these two points. OK, so this is our line 2. OK, line 2, line L2. And how about region? Region says y is greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to means should be a region above this line, right? Okay, a region above this line look like this. Okay, so how about region three? Region three is equivalent to x less than or equal to three, right? And corresponding line L3 is x equals 3, right? So where is x equals 3? Well, let's say 3 is here. x equals 3 is actually a horizontal, uh, vertical line that is parallel to y-axis, okay? This is our line three. Line L3, sorry. And again, you need to clearly label all the intersection points. Okay, so, According to the inequality three, x should be less than three. That means this is a region that is to the left of this line, right? Okay, so now can you tell the overlap? Where is the overlap region? The overlap region should be below L1, above L2, and to the left of L3. So it should look like this. A triangle look like this. Uh, a triangle which looks like this, right? This is all bounded region. And the task is to find the optimized value within this region. And according to the hint, we know that the optimized value can only be achieved at the vertexes. So we need to find all the vertexes, right? Which is here's vertex one, vertex two, three. We have three vertexes, right? Let's call them P1 and P2 and P3, right? We only need to consider the target expression at these three vertexes. So first of all, we need to find the coordinates of the P1, P2, P3, right? Okay, so let's start from P1. P1 is actually an intersection of L1 and L3, right? L1 and L3, which is Course L1 is y equals two thirds of x plus two. L3 is just x equals three, right? And according to this system, the solution is x equals three and y equals four, right? So 
the coordinates of P1 is three, four. Okay, so how about P2? P2 is an intersection point of L1 and L2, which is equivalent to L1. The equation of L1 is y equals two thirds of x plus two. The equation of L2 is y equals minus two x plus four, right? And according to the system, we can easily solve x and y. Okay, let's try to solve it. So the coordinates of P2 is three over four and five over two. All right, how about P3? P3 is an intersection point of L2 and L3, which is a system combining these two equations. Therefore, the coordinates of P3 is 3 minus 2. Okay, so we have the coordinates here, here, and here now. Now let's consider the target function at these three vertexes. So let's make a table here. You can make a table like this. Okay, first column is our vertex. Second column is our target function, which is 2x minus 3y, right? Okay, vertex P1, coordinates is 3, 4. And vertex P2 coordinates 3 over 4, 5 over 2. Vertex P3 coordinates 3 minus 2, right? At vertex P1, target function, the value of the target function is twice of x, which is twice of 3 minus 3 times y. y is 4, right? Which is 6 minus 12, which is minus 6. Okay, vertex P2, target function twice of x, which is 2 times 3 over 4 minus 3 times y, which is 5 over 2, which is 3 over 2 minus 15 over 2, which is also minus 6. Tar uh, vertex P3, target function 2x minus 3y, which is 2 times 3 minus 3 times minus 2, which is 6 plus 6, which is 12, right? And remember that our target is to find the maximum value at these vertexes. And by operation, of course, this is our maximum value, right? Okay, so now let's make a conclusion. Conclusion is when x is three, 
y is minus two. The maximum value of two x minus three y is 12, right? Okay, so this is a complete process of how we can find the maximum value given a linear boundary bounded region. And also the target function is also linear. So please have a look at this. Do you have any questions to ask? If you do, please let me know, okay? Uh, please uh, do remember to correct all the mistakes you made. And if you still don't know how to uh, any of these questions, you can check my notes on Google Classroom. I'll put these notes on Google Classroom, okay? And our next assignment is available probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I'll let you know when it's ready, okay? All right, if you don't know, uh, if you don't have any questions, you're free to leave, okay? Have a nice weekend.